there again, folks. Welcome back to the channel, Highest Gear Reviews. I'm Lou Thomas, and once again, thanks so much for stopping in my little channel. Hey, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, like I always say. It uh, really helps me out, gets me a few more, a uh, little bit more help from my uh, YouTube and get some more people on board to get me some parts. So today, what we're going to be working on, once again, we've got my uh, 2021 C8 Corvette again. Uh, this one is the non-Z51 package. So today what we're going to do is we're going to be doing a little bit of a brake upgrade on it. And what we're adding are these bad boys. So we're going to be putting the uh, cross-drilled and slotted rotors on the uh, non-Z51 Corvette. Uh, obviously you can get these as well for the uh, Z51 model as well. But like I said, mine is non-Z51, so they're just a little bit smaller. About a, um, I think like an inch or so or half an inch in diameter, smaller. So anyway, uh, why we're adding these is a couple of reasons. Um, actually, one of the primary reasons, if you're wondering why these uh, Corvettes don't have the uh, cross-drilled rotors, uh, actually has a lot to do with California as far as um, emissions and all that kind of stuff. And these do create a little bit more brake dust, and that's what they're trying to reduce a little bit is the brake dust and everything like that. Um, so anyway, if you're familiar with your uh, brake rotors, uh, you probably already know why they cross-drill and slot them. The idea between these is basically to release gases as the brake pad goes on heats up it releases a gas which is kind of like a little kind of film almost or a little barrier between the pad and the uh, rotor so this obviously ventilates it out also has these uh, these slots on it as well which help the gases expand out as well uh, they also help a little bit in wet conditions but very minimally because your brakes are going to get so hot it evaporates the uh, water real quick obviously they're ventilated as well and like i said these are cross drilled and then they're kind of chamfered as well Make sure when you get yours, you do have this chamfering, which is kind of that indentation in them. Uh, that reduces the possibility of having cracks develop between the uh, drills, which is one of the weaknesses sometimes that has occurred on um, cross-drilled rotors when they overheat too much. So anyway, we're going to install these on, like I said, our uh, Corvette C8, and I'll take you along through the process. All right, so our first step when we get our brake rotors is they usually come in like a plastic bag and they've kind of got a coating of oil on them, uh, just a light coating of oil. Uh, that's to just to prevent them from flash rusting uh, while they're in storage and in, a, in shipment and all that kind of stuff after the manufacturing. But we do want to remove all that oil from them because that's going to contaminate our brake pads. So just use a can of brake clean, just spray it on. Nice liberal coating. I just like to use like a microfiber rag. Just kind of wipe it off as well. And we're only worried about the brake surfaces on here, okay? So we're just going to wipe that off. And then what I like to do is just put another kind of coating on there. Another coverage. Leave it on there. It'll evaporate super duper fast. This stuff is pretty caustic, so you might want to wear a pair of gloves if you want. Or uh, rubber gloves or something like that. And once again, spray it on. I'm going to wipe it off. Let's make sure I get any of those oil contaminants off. And then spray it off again. There we go. So that's pretty much cleaned the surfaces. And we should be good to go in order to mount it on there. So, of course, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pop the wheels off, get the car in the air. I don't know about you, but I like to use like a little old piece of old carpet or something just so I can kind of you know, sit on it a little bit more comfortable. But anyway, we're going to pop the wheels off and we'll get into it. All right, folks. So... Like I always say, I like to untalk the wheels while the car's on the ground, just loosen them up a little bit, all of them, and then up we go. And if you don't have one of these, this little quick jack, and I recommend you get one, especially if you like to do a lot of track days or racing or anything like that, where you're replacing wheels all the time. So here we go. I've already placed the jacks under, and up we go. There we go. I like to lift it as minimally as possible, but I do have to get it past the first lock on my jack, so I'm going to go up. There we go. So it's going to be locked in place. I'm going to drop it down and we'll get started just so it dro uh, drops on the locks. All right, folks. So here we are. So the wheel's off, obviously. Uh, a couple of things here. So this one here, just remove that uh, like the little star or um, what do you want to call them? Torx head type deal. That one's going to be a T30. And as we come around on the other side, I uh, hope you can kind of see it. Kind of hard to get an angle, but if you can see these two large bolts here. Uh, there's going to be this one here and this one down here. 
So we're going to remove both of these, and those are going to be about a 13 16th. So we'll pop those off, and that way we can get this uh, big old brake caliper out of the way. Uh, if you're wondering what the uh, screwdriver is there for, I kind of put that in there when I, was, I had some wheel spaces on here just to push the wheel out a little bit. But I put those in so it kind of locks it for, you know, when I was unbolting those. So we don't need this right now. And we'll pop that rotor off or the um, uh, brake caliper off. Well, we have the uh, brake uh, caliper off, obviously. Uh, I have the car low enough down here where I've got enough slack in the line where I can just kind of set it on the ground like this. And I don't have to worry about um, stretching out that uh, brake line. But don't let it hang by the brake line. Like I said, just kind of drop your car down low enough so you can just set it on the ground or whatever you need to do. Uh, these are the uh, bolts that we're going to be removing, that we've removed. So there's two of these, 13 16 on the back of that uh, brake caliper. Here we have, again, our T30 screw. So you're going to pop that T30 screw out, kind of pull that aside. Now we're just going to pop the rotor off. I usually put my fingers in the uh, rotor vents, just pop it off, set it aside. And I'm going to get my new rotor. And don't forget, we've got these set screws, and the new rotor has the hole already obviously drilled out for it. It's the same thing. I'm going to use kind of the, the, the rotor vents as much as I can, but we're going to spray it down as well. Slide that on. Boom. Uh, we're going to tighten this down, obviously, a little bit. The set screw and all this does is really just holds it on into its, uh, you know, perfect position as far as where it needs to go. So we'll pop that on. We'll pop the uh, rotor back on again. Uh, sorry, the, the rotor, the uh, caliper back on again, and we'll be good to go. And like I said, before we put the row, the uh, caliper on, I'm just going to spray the surface again real quick with a little bit of brake clean just to get any other kind of further contaminants off. Another thing that you might want to do is you can't really lose your lug nut because it's too short. But if you have a um, just a nut with the same thread, kind of put it on, and you can kind of cinch this down a little bit. Some people like to do that, but there really isn't really super any reason to do it because this set screw is going to hold it anyway. So we'll put it back together. Now, if you have the car completely off the ground, as in both the front wheels off the ground, uh, just to make it a lot easier to get into working behind here, uh, what you can do is just kind of push it around and you can push the, uh, the steering or the uh, wheels off to the side and get them on. Uh, next thing we're going to do, just to get them kind of, you know, better angle so you can work easier. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our brake caliper. Now, depending on how much wear you have on your brake pads, uh, you may have to expand these out a little bit. Uh, there's a couple of tips you can do. One is you can use like a big uh, C-clamp and kind of put it on here and just compress this in. You know, put something to protect the surface here. Put a C-clamp in here, then it'll compress it in. Or if you've got kind of like the big old monkey grip hands, which I've developed over the years, you can just reach in here and squeeze it on both sides and just squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And actually it's just... Uh, this side here and it'll expand or pull this brake pad back up so we'll see if we get lucky and nope we're not gonna fit so like i said i'm gonna reach in i'm gonna squeeze i mean we're talking squeeze as hard as you can and then we're gonna try again so i'm looking for my alignment where it's gonna go see if it's gonna fit there it goes okay yep so we got it in there and we're gonna take one of our bolts we're gonna come back up Pop the bolt in. There we go. Bolt's got a purchase on there. So there we go. So now I'm just going to put in the lower bolt, tighten this all up. I'm going to clean this surface once again. Again, like I said, with some brake clean on both sides. And uh, we'll be good to go. So let's get this finished up. All right. So we got everything back together. Two bolts are back in there. This is in. This I just kind of snug down until it feels pretty, you know, just comfortably snug. And, you know, not over tighten it. Just nice and snug where it's not going to back itself out. The uh, 21316 upper on, uh, those are going to be 155 pounds. So make sure you do set that torque correctly. So make sure you use your torque wrench. And like I said, we're just going to kind of straighten this out now. Boom, and we're good to go. I'm going to go do the other side and then I'll come back. We'll throw a set of wheels on it and we'll uh, take a look at how it looks. But that's pretty much it. Uh, before we do that, real fast though, I'm just going to spray a little bit more. The brake clean on it. Try to avoid getting it on your caliper. And there we go. Pretty darn good. Nice and clean. And then once I get the other one on, once we get the wheels on, uh, we'll take the car out and I'll show you how to um, uh, basically just seat the brakes in as far as um, just doing some uh, kind of uh, 
abrupt stops and all that kind of stuff and let them cool down. I'll show you how we uh, kind of break those brakes in or seed them in. So there we go. All right, so the locks are released. Let's go on down. Take a look at how it looks. There we go. So car's all the way down. And I did put my race wheels on. These are the wheels I use when I race it. So uh, when we take it out to seed them, I'll probably put a different set of wheels on. But anyway, looks good to me. I like how everything looks. I really do kind of like the way those uh, that cross drill look looks. And if you're wondering why I didn't put them on the back, well, pretty simple. Uh, they don't make them for the back just yet, or they're out of stock. So anyway, I'll try to get some back ones and put those on. And I'll show you how to do those as well. So there we go. Cross-drilled slotted rotors, C8 Corvette. Hey, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. Like I said, I'm going to show you how to do the rear ones as well. If you're wondering about this wheel and tire package, I can explain that to you in my next video. And that video, I'm going to be talking about how I'm setting this car up for track days and road racing and autocross. And we'll go into the kind of the Falcon tires I'm using, what size I'm using, how I did my alignment, all that kind of stuff and suspension setup. So there you go, folks. Once again, thanks. Have fun and stay safe. All right, folks. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to want to seat the brakes in on the car. Okay. So what seating is basically is you're introducing the rotors uh, to the brake pads for the first time. So um, what you're trying to do is you're actually trying to transfer a little bit of film from the brake pads to the brake rotors. And uh, that just kind of... Um, it just kind of introduces the two really because there's different deformations in each rotor each brake pad but they just kind of get used to each other and it kind of coats the uh, brake rotor just a little film basically from the brake pads uh, there's multiple ways to do this uh, each brake manufacturer is probably going to have its own way to do it uh, each car manufacturer may have a different way to do it uh, the way i've done it over the years is pretty simple so i'm going to make five passes uh, at 30 miles per hour down to about five miles per hour I'm going to kind of give a little bit of uh, time to cool down in between. Not very long, just long enough to reset the car, basically, to another position. And then I'm going to make five passes from 55 miles per hour down to five miles per hour. So like I said, so I'm going to do about five at 30 and then about five at 55, 50, 60, doesn't really matter. Uh, like I said, you don't want to go all the way to a full stop. Just slow it down to about five miles per hour, then just keep on rolling. Uh, reset your car and then do it again. Uh, like I said, multiple ways to do it. This is just the way I've done it for years and years and it works for me. Uh, so like I said, we'll do that. I'll set up the tripod and you guys can take a look at how we do that real quick. 